Welcome back to my channel. I have so many awesome videos to share with you. I can't wait to show you these projects. These are the best of the best projects that I have put out this year, and I know you're gonna love them. So this first project is so easy, but I just think looks so high in. So you wanna get three of these little candy dishes they sell at Dollar Tree. Next, you're gonna add some painter's tape to the top of your container, and you're gonna repeat this with all three of the containers. And then I just flipped them upside down and I'm going to take them outside to spray paint them. I do two coats of a flat black Rust-Oleum. Once they have a chance to dry, all you have to do is pull off the tape. If you have any area that bled through the tape, you can just scratch that off. Next, use some stones from Dollar Tree to fill up your containers. I'm going to have the rocks going a little bit higher than the black line. And then you can use some of your favorite succulents from Dollar Tree. And this makes a great centerpiece display. So when I found this scarf at Dollar Tree, I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it, but I knew I couldn't pass it up. So I grabbed one of their clear containers. Now these are Christmas, but you can buy these any time of year, regardless of the season. This project is so easy to make and it only costs $2. So you're gonna start by cutting off the fringe on the side of the scarf. So I had a little extra step here. I had to paint my container white because I was afraid that the red was going to show through with my scarf. So I just did one quick coat of paint on it. I knew it wasn't gonna show, so I wasn't really concerned what it looked like. So if you have a bold pattern on your container, just make sure you cover it up. Next, I'm going to cut off the fringe on one edge of my scarf. I'm gonna start by hot gluing the scarf to the bottom and I'm gonna wrap it around so that the bottom edge meets up with the bottom of my container. Now, as you're doing this, just pull your scarf as tightly as possible so that you don't have any bumps. Now, once you get all the way around, just cut it straight up and then hot glue that in place. And then from there, I folded up the remaining portion of the scarf and tucked it into the bottom. You can use this for so many things in your house, but I just love the way it looks. Next, I'm gonna to put together a wreath that was really popular this year. So Dollar Tree has this dual set of wreath forms. So you wanna take both of those, we're gonna be using both of these for the project. I think that a wreath, when you add in multiples, it just really elevates it. So anytime you can add in two or three wreaths, I just love the way it looks. I pulled out some greenery that I already had on hand. These are boxwoods that I've picked up from Dollar Tree, Walmart, and some from Hobby Lobby as well. I like to have a variety because I feel like if you mix the different greenery, it just looks a lot more realistic. So you can see some of them are more muted. I have some more bright greens, and I'm just kind of adding them both in. What I like to do with the greenery pieces is tuck them in where I can, and then I will hot glue them in place. If you have any areas where things are sticking up funny, you can always cut them off or hot glue them down. Now to hang this on the wall, I'm gonna be using a combination of a burlap and another ribbon they sell at Dollar Tree. And I'm simply just going to place them in. When I hang them on my door, I'll just use a command strip on the back of the door. So I love how you can create bathroom accessories from Dollar Tree. So I picked up this little treat container. I also grabbed a soap that I already had on hand because I needed to use the pump. I'm gonna paint the top of my container black as well as the soap pump black as well. Now if you already had a soap pump you had that was black, you wouldn't have to spray paint it. And then with the jar, I'm going to use a flat black spray paint. Now I needed to create an opening here so that my soap dispenser would fit down in there. So I used some wire cutters until I had a big enough opening, trying not to make it go too far. It didn't look pretty on the underside, but it didn't really matter because once I put this on, you couldn't even tell. 
I also created a little label that said soap. If you want these labels, I'll link to the original video down in the description box and you can go print them off. I'm just going to add in the soap label. To seal it, I'm gonna be using a waterproof Mod Podge. Now I also grabbed this cute little toothbrush holder. You want to grab a bowl in the party supply section and I'm going to take it outside and spray paint it with two coats of a matte white spray paint. I'm also going to be adding in a label that says hand towels. Again, that was in the bathroom video. I'll link it for you down in the description box. And then I'll add in that top layer of Mod Podge. Dollar Tree has these amazing paint pens. I am obsessed with their paint pens, you guys. They are really great quality. So I'm just going to add a layer of the paint pen around the top. If you make a little mistake, it's okay. You could just kind of make a little circle down the bottom and it looks cute. I'm gonna roll up some white hand towels and I'm gonna put those in there. These white hand towels I picked up at Walmart. One of my most popular projects on my channel, hands down, are my rope trays. You guys always tell me how much you love them and I really appreciate it. So I try to do different versions of my rope tray, but basically you need this plastic tray from Dollar Tree and some rope. I'll link it for you down in the description box. And you're just going to twist it around till you get to the outside layer. You wanna make sure that you go all the way around and that you don't see any plastic. When you get to the end, you'll tuck the excess in the back. Now I have so many different versions of the rope tray. For this one, I'm going to make it similar to one that I saw on Pottery Barn's website. It was kind of like a sunburst pattern. So I'm going to take painter's tape to help me make a little template. So I'm just kind of stacking up the painter's tape. Next, I cut out a little triangle template that I'm gonna be using for this project. So I'm gonna trace around the template onto my painter's tape and I'm trying to get as many little triangles out of here as I can. Next, I'll cut out each of the individual triangles and I'll start putting them around the area. So the area that's exposed is the area that I'm gonna be spray painting. So I'm just trying to cover up the areas that are gonna remain that natural color. If I was going to be using chalk paint, I could stop here, but I decided that I wanted to spray paint this, so I needed to cover the inside as well. So I went ahead and covered it with tape. A lot of you guys said I should have just put paper down on it and not waste so much tape. And after seeing this, I totally agree with you. I ended up covering the whole thing with tape, but it would have made more sense to just put down some paper and just have a little bit of tape on the outside. Now you're gonna take this outside and spray paint it with two coats of a white matte spray paint. The rope will suck up a lot of spray paint so you can use quite a bit more. It depends on what you want it to look like. If you want it to be more white, then you're gonna add additional coats. If you want it just to kind of have a subtle white look, just add maybe one, one and a half coats. And then from there, once it dries, I'll just remove the tape. I love how this turned out. You could do so many different patterns with this. For this next project, I grabbed three glass containers from Dollar Tree. I also grabbed some of this basket weave from Amazon, and this was super fun to work with. So I'm just going to cut off pieces. I'm gonna create like little handles up top. So I'm cutting off three handles that I can use for this project. I also wanted a piece down at the bottom that I could wrap around the bottom edge. So I'm gonna cut off three pieces for that. Next, I'm gonna be using a metallic spray paint to spray paint all of them on either side. Now, I wasn't happy with the spray paint color, and whenever I'm not happy, I add more paint. So I'm gonna be using some copper paint and some other like kind of goldish paint that I had until I achieve the color that I'm looking for. Don't be afraid of paint. 
You know, the great thing about paint is you can always paint over something. I'm gonna be taking some E6000, and I'm gonna put it on either side of the glasses. To hold the wood pieces in place while they dry, I took some painter's tape and just wrapped it around. I'm gonna let those dry overnight before I pull them off. Next, I'm going to hot glue the bottom piece. I'll repeat these steps for the other two as well. Finish these off, I just added in some candles. I love the way these turned out. For this next project, I'm gonna grab some wood planks from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to grab some of their little wood cubes. Now we're gonna be making some really easy risers. So I'm gonna start by hot gluing four cubes around the edge of one of my planks. Now, if you wanted them all to be the same height, you could just stop there, but I wanted them to have a little bit of variation in height. So on the next one, I'm actually going to be stacking up two cubes. Now you could have a variety of these. I only made two, but honestly, you could make five. You could make a great grouping sitting out. And then I'm gonna stain the entire piece with a color called Golden Oak. This was definitely my go-to color at the beginning of 2021. I just love the way it looks. I just use a foam brush, put it on, and then immediately wipe it off. This next project was so popular on the channel, you guys. I grabbed a toilet plunger and I cut off the excess area on the edge. I ended up picking up my yarn from Michaels, but Dollar Tree sells yarn now, which I'm so excited about. So definitely you can pick it up at Dollar Tree. So I'm just gonna start by creating a handle by wrapping it around the edge and tying it in place. I recommend when you're doing a handle to tie it several times and even hot glue it in place because when you're messing with it, and adding things to it, it can come off. So next I'm gonna start creating bundles of yarn. So whenever I do this, I just pick one template. So like right here, I'm using this piece, but honestly, you could use a cutting mat, you could use poster board, whatever you're using, just make it the same length. And I'm gonna wrap around about 10 pieces. I'll cut it off at the bottom, and then I'm just going to put the bundles laying out. So I'll create all of my bundles before I start adding them to my piece. So next, the trick with this one is I'm gonna be using some rubber bands that they sell at Dollar Tree. These are like in the hair section, and I'm gonna wrap the rubber bands around twice. This is just going to give it a unique look, and it's a little bit different than adding in knots. So I'm starting by adding in the rubber bands on either side of my bundles, and I'll repeat this until I have all of my bundles on. Now the next portion, I wanted to make a fun pattern. I did a rubber band across about an inch down. Then every time I go down to a new row, I'm going to leave a piece out. And what that'll do is just start creating a V shape for my wall hanging. Now trust me, this was so easy to do. You definitely could do this at home. You can either cut it at an angle, but I thought since I already created this V shape, I would just cut it straight across. This was super inexpensive, you guys. I still have it hanging up in my craft room and I love the way it looks. So this next project is hands down my most simple project I ever created, but it has gotten so many views on TikTok. If you guys aren't following me on TikTok, go follow me. I'm Liz Finn McDIY over there. I grabbed this soap container because I just thought it was such a cute look and size, and I'm gonna pull off all the labels. Next, I'm gonna just remove the lid and add in some painter's tape. I wanted this to be gray, so I added in two coats of Slate by rust -Oleum. And then literally all I did was add the cap back on, my most simple DIY, but makes a huge impact.
This next bag I saw when I was walking through Dollar Tree. I love the message on it and I thought it would be perfect as a sign. So I grabbed one of my embroidery hoops that I already have and I'll link them for you down in the description box. And all I did for this project, it was really simple. I tried, the hardest part was honestly just centering it up and trying to get it on the hoop in the center. I cut off the bottom so it was a little bit easier. So once you get it centered, you can open up your embroidery hoop and place it down over the bag. I cut off any excess and put a little hot glue on the bag and that was all there was to this sign. For this next project, I grabbed a glass bowl from Dollar Tree and some caulking. So I'm gonna be wearing gloves and I'm gonna take the caulking and put it in the middle of my container. Next, I'm going to be using a spatula to cover the entire bowl. That's my first goal is just making sure it's completely covered. Next, I'm going to start creating a swirl pattern. And then on the outside, I'm going to be creating lines. You want to let this dry completely overnight before you come back in and start painting it. I always find that the painting part is my favorite. So I painted the entire piece with Waverly White chalk paint on the inside and the outside. And then I added in some different browns and gold colors until it looked the way I wanted it to. If I get a little bit too much paint, I'll just come back in with white. I mean, you can always easily do this. I thought this bowl would be really pretty as like a key bowl for your entryway or, you know, just something decorative where you need a small bowl. I grabbed this marble bowl from Dollar Tree and then I also picked up some candle wicks off of Amazon. These are some Dollar Tree candles and I'm gonna start by boiling water to melt the candle wax. I have a special pan that I use for this project that I picked up from Walmart for only $5. I'm gonna hot glue the candle wicks to the bottom of my bowl. This is just gonna help them stay in place whenever I'm adding in the candle wax. The candle wax takes about 20 minutes to heat up before it's completely melted. You wanna make sure that you're wearing a bunch of protective gear whenever you're touching the candle wax because it is very hot. I'm gonna take the containers out and I will pour them into my bowl. Now, while this is setting up, you want to have something to hold your candle wicks in place. I grab some popsicle sticks. And here's a look at how simple this is and how it turned out. So this next project was super easy to put together. I grabbed two little cars from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut off the wheels using my wire cutter and this is just going to take off the dowels. I also grabbed a board from my house. Honestly, you could use any board that you have. Any size will work. I'm gonna sand down the board and then I'm going to add in a little bit of distress aid. So I'm just gonna take my hammer. I get a lot of questions about this hammer. I'll link it for you down in the description box. And this is just going to bring out a lot of detail whenever you're staining the board. Next, I'm gonna take those wheels and hot glue them to the bottom corners of my board. Next, I'm going to stain the entire piece with the color golden oak. I love to see the detailing coming out after you distress the board. You can see how much more rustic and cool it looks just by adding in a little bit of distressing. Let that dry completely and this makes a perfect base for your kitchen centerpiece. This next project is definitely one of my favorites I've done on the channel. So I grabbed a green planter from Dollar Tree, a stick from outside. I'm gonna start by cutting off the tiny branches at the bottom. I'm creating a topiary, so I want there to be several branches at the top, but the smaller ones I needed to cut off. 
I grabbed three olive branches from Walmart. That's what I'm be using for the top of my topiary. So I'm going to cut off the branches to add into the topiary. Then I'm going to use my drill to drill holes into my branches at the top. Next, I'm gonna take the branches and put them in. Now some of them, you know, went in great. Some I had to add hot glue to make it hold in place. And there's no real rhyme or reason to this. You just wanna kind of move your stick around and add it where you think you know, you need more branches or you need to add them. I just tried to make it look as natural as possible. So once I had the majority of my planters in place, I added in some plaster of Paris and some water to my container. I forgot about the little area at the bottom, so I hot glued that really quick because water started you know, going everywhere. So I added some plaster at the bottom. If you had cement, you could use that as well. This is just what I had on hand. And next I'm going to take my entire stick and put it into the center of this container. Now you're going to have something to support it while it is drying. I had these wooden spoons. You could use dowel rods, anything you had on hand, and I taped it in place. Let this dry completely for, you know, basically overnight. When I came back the next day, I removed the tape and I went in because the areas where I had cut off the branches, I didn't like how they stuck out. So I added in some elephant and white paint just to kind of make them blend in a little bit more. From there, I looked at the piece and I had a little bit of extra olives and some branches. So wherever I thought it was sparse, I just added in some more olives or some more branches by hot gluing them in place. And I love the way this olive tree turned out. always pick up spring containers at Dollar Tree and this container they've had for a couple of years but I still get it and love it. I'm going to be wrapping it with some macrame cord. I'll link it for you down in the description box and I'm just going to wrap it around hot gluing onto the back. When I get to the top I'm going to cut it off and just hot glue the rest of it in place. I wanted the lower portion of this to be a darker color so I'm going to use painter's tape around the top. And since I was going to be spray painting this, I needed to add some paper over the entire top. So I'm just going to use some of my craft paper and I'm going to tape it in place. I'll spray paint it with two coats of a black flat Rust-Oleum. Remove the painter's tape and then I'm going to be using one of my favorite plants from Ikea to dress this up. And I think it looks awesome sitting out on my entryway table. So I always see these bead garlands when I'm out shopping, but really you can do them inexpensively yourself. So I'm going to be using some bamboo skewers and some wood beads that I buy in bulk off of Amazon. I'll link them for you as well. I'm going to use a little bit of painter's tape at the bottom. Now this is my new technique for spray painting beads and let me tell you it is worth the time because it takes like half the time to spray paint. So I put some beads on bamboo skewers. Don't put too many on there because you want there to be, you know, a little bit of area where you can move them around. Next, I'm going to be using a black spray paint and I'm just going to spray paint each side of them. I'll try to move them a little bit so I get as much of them covered as possible. Now, once that dried, I came out and I moved them around again and spray painted them. This only took me two coats to spray paint all of these beads. Now, if I just had these in a container, I, it would take me like five coats. So I definitely like using the bamboo skewers and I feel like it coats them really well. Once I did that, I took them all off of their skewers and I used some Dollar Tree twine to just lace them on. Once I get them all together, I'm gonna tie them in a knot together. These look great sitting out to dress up any decor.
Now, sometimes when I'm at Dollar Tree, I will find certain things and just buy them because I think they're so cute. That's what happened with these placemats. I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with them, but I decided I was gonna cover this container that I had from Dollar Tree as well. So to do that, I didn't have enough to cover the whole way around with the size that it was, so I cut off a little piece and added it to the back making sure that the bottom lines up with the bottom of the container. Then I'll just start hot gluing it around the back with the longer piece. And then I'll just tuck in all the material from the placemat and hot glue that in place. Now I wanted the bottom to look finished, so I took a second place mat. I think I could have made it out of one, but I wasn't thinking correctly. And I just cut out that bottom piece and I'll hot glue that to the bottom. And I think that just finishes it off a little bit better. So for this next project, I wanted to do something a little out of the box. So I bought some veneer at Lowe's. This was definitely a little bit tricky to work with, but the end product was really awesome. I also grabbed two glass containers from Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by measuring out how much I want to cut out. I decided I wanted them to go up about five inches on my container. So I measured the veneer out five inches. I also measured out how much it would take me to cover the containers completely and then I cut off those pieces so I was working with a much smaller piece. Now I love the color of the veneer. I just wanted it to stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to be using just a natural stain which basically just pulls out that color. Once that had completely dried, I was on to my next step of attaching them to my containers. This was a little bit trickier than I thought it was gonna be. And in the future, maybe I need to wet them to make them stay on better. The way I figured out that this works the best is to use E6000 and a little bit of hot glue, wrap them up, and then you're going to use painter's tape to secure them. You're gonna to have to let it dry overnight. Even after letting it dry overnight, I still had some areas that were not completely down. So I came back the next day and I had to add in additional E6000 before I could completely take off the painter's tape. But I do love the way these look once I was able to get you know the veneer completely down. You could fill these with anything you like. I put mine, I added in some rocks. I also added in some candles to these and I think they look gorgeous sitting out. Let me know down in the comments which of these projects was your favorite. I love knowing your guys' opinion. If you're new here, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of these fun DIYs the first time they come out. And I'll talk to you guys in our next one. Bye.